Hi, Mike Renato here with Athletic Motion Golf. Today is the selection committee. It's March Madness. So there's going to be a lot of bubble teams. Some are going to get in, some aren't. Now, there's also bubbles in your golf game. And today we're going to take a look at how these bubbles can instantly, I'm not, this is not theory, how they can instantly take strokes off your score. Stay tuned to find out how. So one of the really cool things with the uh, with the Foresight Sports FSX software is that we're able to actually, well, I would say actually, virtually, go out on a course, um, drop balls, play different scenarios, all those things. And it lets us see data from a really cool perspective, and it really helps uh, our players get a better grasp on what they're doing because it's just raw unemotional, non-emotional, no strings attached data, it's black and white. And it really kind of opens their eyes to what they're doing. And one of those really cool features, uh, uh, discoveries that we're making is that every player has a shot bubble. And, but most players play, so if they say, all right, I'm playing a 150 yard shot, they remember their best 150 yard shot or or what they can do, what club they can hit, excuse me, how that ball can fly to the 150-yard uh, pin. What they often don't do is kind of understand what they're likely to do. So golfers, especially amateur golfers, are really poor at predicting what they're likely to do and oftentimes choose clubs, choose scenarios, choose targets based on what they can do. So we're really making a push to try to get golfers thinking more about their shot bubble um, as that relates to what they're likely to do. Again, this is on the course in scoring mode. This isn't practice, right? We, we, we practice to shrink that bubble, but when you're out shooting score, you need to play for that bubble for what you're likely to do, not just for what you can do. We all can hold the ball from 150, but it's not very likely to happen. So with that in mind, Let's take a look at a typical typical scenario here. And this golfer's name is Tim. Uh, he's going out for a round of golf. So like most golfers, he's going to head to the driving range and warm up a little bit. Now, when he goes to the range, he goes through a certain amount of clubs and he hits his 150-yard club. He hits five balls with that. Not, not atypical, right? Tim's shot pattern is usually a little push draw. Now, for whatever reason, on this day... He is hitting the push part, but the ball's not drawing. Maybe he slipped wrong. Maybe he's got new grips, whatever. The ball's just not turning over for him, but he's starting it on his intended line, which is out to the right, and it's just not coming back. So let's, um, and then we're looking at kind of, I want you to focus on kind of the bird's eye view. So let's get rid of a little bit of this data here. So we're going to get rid of that, and we really don't need, for practical purposes, we don't need to see trajectory and all that necessarily from the side view so now this is Tim's shot bubble that circle of his five shots is his shot bubble now let's he's finished warmed up warming up and let's see what he does out on the course so he leaves the range goes to the first hole well first let's take a look at some data here so his shot bubble let's say let's look at distance wise his longest ball was 149. His shortest ball was 141. Not a big deal. It's eight yards, eight paces, 24 feet. Not a huge deal, especially when you consider um, range balls, you know, getting warmed up, those type of things. So not a critical deal. Now, if we saw 20 yards differences there, 25, 30 yards, what a lot of players do, uh, there'd be more cause for concern. But Tim's a fairly decent player, so his distance dispersion is not terrible. Now, let's take a look at his directional dispersion. So his too far left, too far right, his left to right dispersion was on average 25 feet. Again, not horrible. But if you take a look, Tim's a push drawer. He only hit one ball and it was two feet left of the flag. The rest of those balls were as far as 65 feet to the right, all the way to two feet left. So his miss pattern his shot bubble today his tendency what he's likely to do 
was right of the target. And this is for a push draw golfer. So Tim's heading to the course. First hole just happens to be a par five. Uh, hit his drive. He laid up. He couldn't carry the water. So he laid up into the left rough. He's got 154 yards in, out of the rough. And the pin is over water, a little peninsula green on the left side. So it's it's short-sided from 150 yards, basically. Not the best angle to shoot at a really tiny target. So let's see how Tim played this shot. So he knows he hits a push draw. So he's going to go through and kind of set himself up. He's going he's gonna to get his yardages. He's going to set himself up. So he's going right now looking at his yardages. He's thinking, okay, I hit a little push draw. We're going to start this ball seven yards right of the flag because that's my normal shot. That's what I can hit, and that's what I like to see. So let's see what he does. So we got his ball in play here. And he's about ready to pull the trigger. He's seeing this ball start out to the right because there's water left. And he knows this ball is going to turn over, hopefully head pretty close to the hole. Ah. So what happened here? He's a push drawer. He hit a little push cut. Now, he covered the water, no problem. That's the good news. But take a look at the bad news. He started eight yards, I believe it was. Let's say seven yards, bumped himself seven yards right of the target. So that's 21 feet. Now, he hit a push draw, excuse me, a push cut another 56 feet right. So that's what, 77 feet from the flag stick? Now Tim's really increased his chances and is really likely to three putt this green rather than two putt or even one putt for birdie. So he took water out of play, but he brought bogey into play because he really didn't understand his shot pattern. Now, when he hit this shot, he saw that ball push cut. He was disappointed, dropped his head. He's like, come on, man, I never hit that shot. Well, if we go back to just half an hour ago when he was on the range warming up with his 150 club, we find out, yeah, he actually does hit that shot, especially today. So we looked, he, he missed a shot on the course, 56 feet to the right of the target. He actually hit one in warm up that was 65 feet to the right of the target. So when, when you know, obviously he, he's not looking at a bird's eye view of where his shots land, but he saw a ball take off push cut on the driving range. Now, when he hit that shot on the driving range, he was raking another ball before that ball actually landed because it wasn't what he wanted to see. He was wanting to see push draws and come hell or high water. He was going to play a push draw. He's going to set up for a push draw because that's what he likes to hit. But the reality of the situation, he actually throws some push cuts in there. So his shot pattern um, was, was fully in line with the shot he actually hit on the course. He was smart enough to aim it to the right, so he took water out of play, but he brought in a 76, 77-foot putt, which is most people are going to three-putt that more than they are going to one-putt, certainly, but even two-putt it. So if he would have paid a little more attention to his shot bubble and not been so disgusted on the range when he hit that foul ball to the right, he would have kind of understood in certain situations, hey, this is useful information because this is what I'm likely to do not just what I can do. So the shot he hit on the course fit well within his shot bubble. Now, let's give him another crack at this. So let's give him a mulligan. So there's his, there's his, the red dot is his ball for that first shot. Now, let's, let's go back to that kind of overhead view that we saw. That's his shot bubble of the five balls that he hit warming up. And you can see the red dot uh, is out to the right. That's only because this shot bubble here on the screen is lined up to the flag stick, which is what he was doing on the driving range. Now, let's get rid of this black shot bubble and change the opacity so we can see it overlay with the actual golf hole. So now we've lightened it up. We can see now that Tim actually should be aiming dead at the flag stick, right? Because all of his balls in practice, one ball went two feet left of the flag, Pretty good putt to have a two-footer from 150. 
but the rest of his balls didn't push draw, they kind of pushed and went slightly push cut. So if he's playing smart in this scenario, he's actually taking dead aim right at the flag stick. Now, again, keep in mind, these are this is kind of a money ball situation. This isn't guaranteed. This is what you're likely to do. This is organic, and this is a heck of a starting location when you're out there trying to move this shot bubble around. So it's, it's not, you don't always play balls right in the middle of that bubble. Usually you aim towards the edges. And in this case, Tim lines up this shot bubble, or he lines himself right up at the flag, which kind of skews his shot bubble to the right. Now let's let him hit the same ball again. See what he does. So there you can see the tracer for his first ball way out to the right. All right so now he's going to align himself right smack at the flag stick. And let's re-hit the shot and see what happens. So he's setting it up. He's not trying to do anything different. He's just giving himself better information to hit this mulligan. So he still hit the push, which is his normal shot shape. This one actually turned over a couple feet, but it still didn't sweep back to the target. But guess what? Now he's 19 feet from the hole instead of 77, 76 feet from the hole. Now he's got a legitimate birdie putt rather than a legitimate three putt. So that's a potential of one to sh two shots different uh, after understanding how to move his shot bubble based on what he's likely to do. Again, this is organic. This is not a set in stone. Every ball you hit is going to fall within that shot bubble. You're just simply hedging your bets. It's like counting cards in Vegas. You're hedging your bets. You're playing money ball with what you're likely to do, not what you can do or what you hope to do for the shot. And changing that, that seemingly little bit of kind of mental tweak, it, it literally will start shaving strokes off your score without your swing, without your, you know, your mechanics or anything getting better. It's, it's taking what you're likely to do and playing that versus taking what you want to do or taking what you can do. Now, you add to that some instruction, add to that some improved mechanics, and now you're improving both of them. Then you really start to see strokes disappear from your scorecard. So let's take this shot and go back to that. So 19 yards to the right of the target, his average when he was warming up was 25, excuse me, 19 feet right of the target. His average was 25 feet. So now he is well within his shot bubble. In fact, he actually beat his average by a little bit. So he's, he's got a birdie putt, right? He, he did everything right, and he wound up playing to what he was likely to do and pulled it off. So there we go. There's his shot bubble. There's his ball. 19 feet from the hole. The only problem is you usually don't get mulligans in tournaments, but I guarantee you the next time he has this shot, he's going to be thinking shot bubble rather than what I can do. He's going to be thinking what I'm likely to do. And that's it. That's how you take bubbles. We're in March Madness. That's how you take bubbles and improve your scorecard immediately. This isn't theory. This is the reality of it. So you take this over the course of one round, you start adding that up over the course of seven, eight rounds, over the course of a month, over the course of a year, you're saving yourself a ton of strokes just by moving your shot bubble around to where it's advantageous to you scoring and, and forget about trying to play with what I can do. Save that for the range. Save that for goofing around with your buddies. When you're trying to score, play with what you're likely to do, and you're going to see your scores drop. As always, thanks for watching. Mike Renato with Athletic Motion Golf. Go Cats.